the Buddha used the word metta, which is a Pali word. And the literal or hidden meaning of this is friendliness, pure loving friendliness. So it's not like the love between husband and wife or between parents and children. It's a, it's a friendliness, a loving feeling that is clean of these and therefore uh, it's clean of this greed, tana, craving. And this metta, this loving kindness, is a moist quality. It makes the, mo the mind moist. That means that the mind is not dry or brittle. And it's like glue. When two people are joined with metta, then they don't come apart. And it's similar to when you want to join two pieces of paper together. You can put glue on just one side, but it sticks better if you put glue on both pieces of paper. And then they stick together quite well. And if you use something like super glue to join two things together, then they become virtually like one thing they stick together quite well. And if people are joined together by this feeling of loving kindness between them, then they, um, they become a pair joined by this friendly feeling. And this, is, this feeling is called metta. In essence, this metta is the opposite, the opposite of dosa or anger, it's adosa, called adosa. It's a concomitant mind state. Dosa is anger, resentment, gr bearing a grudge, being dissatisfied, not being able to be patient with things. So this is the... Um, this is the opposite. Metta is the opposite. The concomitant mind state of adosa. And it takes as its object something lovable. Pia. P-I-Y-A. And that may be a good quality such as having good basic morality, being good-hearted, these are things that make someone lovable. Someone like this helps others without, uh, without any expectation. And this, uh, is, this brings about the feeling of being pleasing. People are delighted when they see someone like that. And that's manapa, called manapa in Pali. So when one sees such a person having, having good basic morality, a good heart, when one sees something like this, then this quality of metta arises. When one person, one being, looks at another, there are bound to be things that we don't like. And if we dwell on the qualities of another being that we don't like, then anger is bound to arise, dosa. If we see something depressing or discouraging, then depression will arise. That's the, um, that's kind of the withdrawn uh, characteristic of anger. Or one may be actively angry, that's active, active dosa, aggressive dosa. And if we just let these feelings be, then there's going to be resentment and hatred. The mind connected with dosa, the uh, ang consciousness rooted in anger, 
if it arises, then the mind can't be moist. The mind won't be, it loses all its freshness and the mind becomes brittle. So this quality of dosa, dosa is very bad. Metta, loving kindness, on the other hand, makes the mind moist. And this is called the conscious, metta consciousness. Whether it's the aggressive form of anger or the more uh, self-directed form of anger, whichever form of anger it is, dosa, the mind can't be fresh. And in the world these days, anger has become extreme. It's extreme between individuals, between groups. People have, and the result is that the, there's no patience. People have no ability to bear. When one is harmed, one retaliates. And this, this occurs on an individual level, uh, between groups of people, between countries. Weapons are being, uh, new weapons are being invented all the time to find out how to retaliate, to, as a way to retaliate. So, uh, because no, there's not a, any reflection involved this fire of anger is overwhelming the world. It is a very frightening situation. Just as there is true metta, true loving kindness, there is also false metta or false loving kindness. False metta is grasping, tanha. It's wanting to others to like us in return. So, sorry. Um, it's like it's like the love that happens between sweethearts. One person wants the other to like them, or between husband and wife, or between parents and children. Parents take care of their children because they want the children's love, and children in return want their parents to love them. And uh, both sides in these, all these pairs behave um, with that in mind. Both, it goes both ways. So, um, of course, there is some moisture involved in this type of craving, grasping, but it's the moisture of tanha, or craving. So, because love is involved, this is called false metta. And this false metta is not needed at all during the meditation practice. What is needed during meditation practice is true metta, which wants what is good for others. In the texts, this type of love between husband, wife, and so on is called gehasita pema. It's love that is based on dwelling together. And in essence, uh, one is trying to, one loves the other person because they see that they can get something out of it. One is looking at what one gets for oneself in these types of relationships. And this is, this can be destructive. Take for example, uh, a young man talks to a young woman because he wants her to like him, but she doesn't like him, and then he wants to kill her. So <clears throat> this happens, this can happen between husband and wife, it can happen to, between friends, it can happen anywhere that two people are uh, looking at what can they get out of the relationship. So what happens is that when we don't get what we want, then we become enemies. And this happens all over. This happens, this is very prevalent, very widespread in the world. 
with metta, there's not a single bit of self-interest. One is wanting the other person to be well, to be free of uh, distress, free of mental suffering, free of physical distress, to be able to, uh, to be at ease in all ways. This is true metta. So this metta, as just described, is a wholesome consciousness, kusala citta. And in arahants, it's functional consciousness, or kirya citta. So metta can arise as either wholesome or as a functional mind, consciousness. The type of love that is caught up in craving, or tanna, is unwholesome, akusala. And these days, mostly, this is what is found in the world, this type of gehasita, pema, the, the love that people feel as they dwell, dwell together in a house. So, uh, men, most people, for most people, this is all that they find in life. For those who want to develop true metta, they should understand its essence. There are two ways to develop metta. One is as an absor absorption or jhana, and the other is to create ordinary wholesome consciousness. And the first topic developing metta as a jhana, as an, absorbed, as an absorption practice, this topic is very, very broad, and Sayadawji does not have time to talk about it now. If he has a chance, when circumstances are favorable, then he will talk about it. So here we are doing metta as a way of developing wholesome consciousness, kusala citta. When beings can't control their mind, most of the time it's anger that becomes extreme. And due to people being out of control due to extreme anger, problems, social problems in the world become, have become widespread. So metta is the quality that is free of dosa, and the word, um, the word for this dosa is vera. Vera is translated as yen in Burmese, and it's translated as enemy. But in this case, it means the internal enemy, the nearest kind of enemy. There's internal enemies, and there's also personal enemies. So the internal enemy is the nearest. The, the enemy in the form of a person, we encounter such enemies from time to time, but it's rare. So there's akusala vera, and this is the, the consciousness that is rooted in anger or dosa. This is the internal enemy. And there's also Pugala Vera, the enemy in the form of a person or being. This enemy is far from us, and we can see this enemy and avoid it. So the unwholesome consciousness rooted in anger and other akusala consciousness, other unwholesome mind states, these are the internal enemy, they are the nearest enemy that we face. So vera, is, in terms of akusala vera, loba, greed, is also an, an inter, internal enemy. If our greed is extreme, then the internal enemy assaults us. If there's dissatisfaction, then that's the internal enemy of dosa, or anger, assaulting us, rising up. And 
There's also not knowing, confusion, delusion or moha can also um, be the be involved is also involved as an akusala vera. It can also lead us to do unwholesomeness. So loba, dosa, moha, greed, hatred, and delusion are are the, are the internal enemies, and as well as the consciousness that is that occurs together with these mind states. And if we just let the mind go, then sometimes there will be anger, and it can become extreme. Sometimes there will be greed, and it can become extreme. All the time there will be confusion. So, confusion also can be uh, the prominent quality when there's unwholesomeness. So all these are akusala vera, the enemy, the internal enemy of akusala. This, these are also called kilesa vera, and this is the nearest enemy that we face. So when people develop metta, we say, May, may they be free of the enemy. May they be free of enemies. Or they may, be, may they be free of danger. Sieroji mentioned it in Burmese, but if we, what we're used to is saying it in Pali, avera hontu. And what this really means is, may they be free of the three internal enemies. So this is the nature of, of developing loving-kindness, of developing metta. If people would develop metta in this way, then the world would be peaceful. So many uh, people today are not able to control their extreme greed or anger. And when the internal enemies are not quelled, then dangers arise. Dangers arrive at our door. So when we um, develop loving kindness for others, we wish that they be free of, 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 of the enemy and danger. May they quell the internal enemy and become free of danger. If there's no control and if one's greed, loba, becomes extreme and one turns to stealing what doesn't belong to oneself, committing adultery or lying <clears throat> for one's benefit, then the enemy of loba greed is attacking us and some people think that this is good they think that such feelings should be encouraged but if loba greed becomes extreme and one goes to the extent of acting upon it this is encouraging the enemy when people can't control their mind and anger becomes extreme. People go to the extent of killing another or harming, committing all sorts of wrongdoing, lying out of anger. And some think this is good, and they think that it's good to express one's anger, it's good to act on one's anger. But in fact, this is encouraging the enemy our own internal enemy. Some people think that uh, it doesn't matter if you do right or wrong, and because of this confusion about what is not, uh, not being clear about what is good and what is not good, people do all sorts of things that are not suitable. And this too 
is encouraging the enemy of delusion, Mohavira. So these enemies, because people encourage these enemies, because these enemies haven't been quelled, these enemies cause problems for individuals and they cause social problems. So because these enemies of loba, dosa, and moha are rising up in individuals, social problems are created. And in the world, these problems are very difficult to solve. In essence, if one doesn't keep the five precepts, then enemies multiply. And if one keeps the five precepts, then the enemies are quelled. Because if one doesn't keep the five precepts and harms others, there are few in the world who would not retaliate. So when one has internal enemies, one is also bound to have enemies in the form of people, Pugala Vera. When we develop metta, we send the, uh, we express the wish, we develop the wish that the person be free of these enemies. May they be free of the internal enemies and thus be free of danger. Because the internal enemy is not quelled, is not put down, then enemy in the forms of persons or beings arise and problems come up and they surround one. So one who is surrounded by these problems, looking at one's life, looking at the, the wrong one is done, one blames oneself, one starts to criticize oneself, seeing, saying to oneself, what I did was, was bad, what I did was low and base. So this, Dane, this uh, is called Atanuvara Pia, the danger of self-blame. And further, those around us also will criticize us when we've, when we've um, committed wrong. And so this is called Paranuvara Pia, the danger of blame by others. Furthermore, laws are established, and when we break those laws, then the relevant authority will punish us. And this is called danda biya, the danger of punishment. Furthermore, in committing misdeeds, our intention is low and base. Our chetana is base. And this, that makes our life in the very in our present lifetime it makes our life low level and the next life is also going to be low level because of this chetana most likely so these four dangers come into one's life when we are not able to quell or put down the internal enemies but if we're able to quell the internal enemies, the uh, kusala, then these dangers won't arrive. So when we develop metta, we say, avera hontu. And this means, uh, if we take it in terms of the explanation that we've just heard, this means that may, may beings be free of the internal enemy May they be free of enemies and dangers. So this expression of metta is very meaningful and it brings a lot of benefit. So first of all, one sleeps easily, one wakes up easily, one doesn't have any bad dreams. These are just three of the benefits that come when one develops 
the mind of loving kindness, of metta. There are 11 benefits that are described in the text, but since this is a meditation retreat, this is enough of a description for now. So if one, just as we wish for others, if one also is free of the internal enemies and free of, therefore, of the external enemies, not committing any misdeeds, one doesn't make enemies, and therefore dangers don't arrive. So such a one is free of mental distress and free of physical distress. Because of quelling the internal enemy, mental and physical well-being arise. So for the for mental for us to have mental and physical well-being, the most important thing is to quell or put down the internal enemy, and that it that means to keep sila. That means to keep our eight precepts. If we are eight precepts yogis, if we're monks, that means to keep the vinaya purely. Whatever our sila is, we have to keep it purely and then the internal enemy will be quelled under control. So because people aren't able to keep sila, then enemies abound. abound. But when we can keep our sila, then we have well-being. We have peace of mind, and we also have physical well-being. But there's... uh, So this is what we wish for people. We wish that they be free of the internal enemies, be free of mental suffering and physical distress. And there's one more thing, which is that since we can't live without food, clothing, and so on, we also make the wish that all beings be able to take care of themselves easily. May they be able to manage their lives easily. So this is what we do when we are trying to develop the wholesome mind. And so to develop the wholesome mind, we should all do loving kindness, metta. And this will bring us the results of being able to sleep well, being able to wake up well, and so on. It brings many benefits. And it brings us freedom from danger as we undertake the practice. So everyone should develop metta. So Sayadaraji just described how if we're going to practice, we need to develop metta for about one minute twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And Sayadaraji just recited the Pali. We all have it in our books. Um, so in English that would be may all beings be free of enemies and danger may all beings be free of mental suffering may all beings be free of physical distress may all beings be able to take care of themselves happily So we should. So, English so I'm not here. Pali. Okay. May all beings, please repeat after me. May all beings, may all beings, be free of enemies. Be free of danger. May all beings be free of mental distress. May all beings be free of physical distress. May all beings be able. to take care of themselves 
easily. So if we develop metta like this, wishing that all beings be free of the internal enemy, be free of mental suffering, physical distress, be able to care for themselves happily, it's not possible that all beings are going to experience this result. Because all beings go according to their own karma. So, what is important about doing this is that in one's own being to quell the internal enemy of greed, hatred, and delusion, this is what is important, regardless of whether, uh, regardless of what happens when we send our loving kindness. We shouldn't think that, oh, if we don't, if we aren't able to uh, bring about this result in all beings, what's the use? Why are we doing this loving kindness? Uh, don't think that it doesn't matter, because when one does this loving kindness meditation, this metta, one is free of the wild mind. And this is very important. In So today, Sieroji has concluded speaking about metta, loving kindness, and tomorrow he's going to speak about the remaining two protective meditations. May all beings, may all of us develop loving kindness, and may this quality overwhelm the world so that the number of people who have quelled the internal enemy increase and may the world become peaceful in this way. Sayadaji urges us to undertake this seriously.